Do you know what we haven't done together in a long, long time? figured today was just as good a day as any. Got my copy paper. And here's just old cookie sheet. My coffee and tea mixture. My chai and my little bit of coffee going in there. A little bit of baking soda to cut the acid. Smells good. I don't know what kind of color this is gonna give me. I don't think I've ever used this chai tea before. So I'm just going to start stacking. Whoa, I would try not to spill it all over the place. Sound good? So how is everybody? It is uh, not 2020 anymore. I don't know if that fills some of you with with hope or maybe just apprehension about what else could happen. For those of you that may be new or have come around since the last time I tea stained paper, which was, I mean, I've tea stained paper, but I haven't had a tea stain chat in probably two years. I'm guessing. I'm just guessing. I'll have to look that up. You'd think I'd be the, the expert on when that would be, but no. So this, this is an old bed sheet. I have been tea staining on this bed sheet for oh, probably a good four years. And I don't put it through the washing machine with soap. I only hose it off and then let it dry in the sun between tea dyeing sessions. <laughs> Uh, because I don't want to lose the the color that has been implanted into this into the fibers of course by now it I don't know if it would go anywhere but it ends up giving me some cool texture and tonal values because of of how the stain has seeped into the sheet. The biggest thing is just making sure that it is completely dry before before it is rolled up and put away for the next time because you don't want mold or mildew or anything. That that that's important. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't sounds awful. I don't wash it. I don't wash it with soap. And this is just copy paper. It's nothing special or expensive or fancy by any means whatsoever. And I don't dry my papers in the oven. For me, it's a waste of time unless I need the paper right this minute. And I usually try to tea stain a, at least a couple days ahead of time if I need tea stained paper because I don't wanna babysit an oven all day. I can use my time more wisely if I can just dip the paper, lay it out, turn on the fan, and let it dry on its own. And I don't live in a very humid climate and it's winter anyway, so with the furnace on and that kind of thing, it, the air is really dry, so I don't, I don't have any problem with it not drying. <laughs> So there's a refresher course for those of you that have been around a minute that might remember. And there's a primer for those of you that don't know how I tea stain my paper when I tea stain paper, because I don't always do it, maybe half the time. But I probably have not tea stained any paper, maybe last winter, maybe last winter, 
I tea stained paper. That's how long it's been. But I tea stained a lot at once so that I didn't have to do it several times. I think I did, I don't know, a couple hundred sheets. And I find that I can layer them up um, on top of each other and make several, several layers and let them dry. As long as I don't use paper with recycled content in it. If I use paper that has recycled content, then I have to leave it in one layer or when it's dry, it will, all the layers will stick to one another and that's, that's maddening. <laughs> you spend all that time tea staining or coffee staining, whatever you're doing, the paper, and then you go to pull it apart and it's all stuck. Oh, it's just, it's horrible. It's just horrible. I'm going to continue just going in this area and then I'll fill up this area in a minute. I'm going to see how many I can get layered up. Now the bottom layer will get more of the color from the sheet because it's laying next to it, but it certainly does transfer through. And I don't, I don't use a paintbrush and I just like to dip it into the solution and get it saturated, lay it down and walk away because if I had to sit here and paintbrush every single one of these I'd be bored in about five minutes <laughs> but everybody does this differently because everybody has different space available to them uh, this happens to be a work table in my studio that it's not the one I usually film at this is my more like a cutting table or a prep table. It's easier to use it and still have other space at the other side of the room on my table where I usually am doing the filming and, and that kind of thing where most of my tools are over there. I've been meaning to kind of resituate things because I would like to designate this table for certain steps that either take up a lot of room or a lot of time, maybe something needs to dry glue or when you have to lay out leather or fabric or big big pieces of paper to to cut down, it's it's more difficult to do it over on my other table where I do my filming because that's a more confined space and I really, really dislike having to make a mess out of where I'm going to be filming. And then I have to clean it up before I can start doing the next thing before I can film. I'm just trying to be a little bit better at spending my time so that I'm not chasing my tail or spinning my wheels or whatever cliche analogy you want to put in there. I just sometimes I feel like the more I try to complicate things, the more I end up sabotaging my time frame, which happens a lot anyway. Can you see the coffee seeping through from underneath? I think it looks pretty cool. It's not one of my favorite chores, but it beats cleaning the oven or the refrigerator, which is the worst thing ever is cleaning the refrigerator. I need to do that this weekend. And not just like Windex off the outside on the front. No, no, no. I have to take the shelves out and make a big sink of soapy water and get everything cleaned out and put everything back in. Because if you're going to do it, do it right. Once I start to clean something, then it usually really, really has to be done meticulously to the nth degree. And then I can be oblivious about it for a while. I wish I was one of those type of people that love to clean, love to organize. I don't mind organizing and free up some, free up some space or free up some time or you know, that kind of stuff. But 
as a rule, it's not like I'm just giddy to go empty out all the closets every spring and go through them. That'd be nice. I'm just not one of those people. I found a recipe for gluten-free sandwich bread or, or rolls, whatever you want to do with it. And it had a couple extra ingredients that I did not have on hand that I had to get so that I could try it out. I'm a huge bread fan. Attempting to cut gluten out of my life is, it's kind of hard on me. <laughs> okay, it's really hard on me. Because I was a pastry chef in another life, it's kind of part of my DNA now. And uh, there really isn't quite anything like wheat flour and how it bakes and how it develops gluten structure and it's just there's nothing like it because if there was they would have found it right <laughs> but I did find a couple recipes with some good reviews very good reviews so I want to try it out and I'm going to be a total snob about it I know I can tell you that right now because my standards are horrifically unattainably high. <laughs> and I know that I will, I will try to do my best to honor the recipe and do it exactly how it is lined out. I want to stick my own little tweaks in there because after baking for so long, I can look at a recipe and I can tell you if it's going to work or not most of the time. When I look at this gluten-free recipe, you know, I don't know exactly how these different flour combinations are going to react because I really have very little point of reference. So I need to suck it up and just trust the process. <laughs> Wish me well. I will let you know if it's fantastic. I'm running down to the bottom of the pile here, folks. I had 50 sheets of paper that I was dying. Getting down to the, to the dregs. Okay, I am out of paper now. But even though this is three layers right here, the coffee is still seeping through from, that, from the sheet. So because I used this sheet, I don't have to make my coffee solution really, really, really dark because when the paper is wet, it will draw the color from the sheet underneath it. That is the Nick the Booksmith, don't wash your sheet paper staining technique. I realize it seems a little archaic, but it works and it creates some really, really cool texture. Only problem is, it takes a few years of using the sheet <laughs> to build up that color, but I think you can do it if you try. You can figure it out. All right, well, I'm going to, I'm gonna let you go for the moment. I hope everybody is having a great January 1st. And even if you're not having that great of a January 1st, be glad that it's not December 32nd, 2020. I was totally expecting January 1st to never come. I just thought, you know what? It's going to be December 32nd and then December 33rd and then December 34th. And we're like, oh no, it's like a Twilight Zone episode. I was totally expecting that and it would not have been a surprise. So I was pleasantly surprised to see it say January 1st on my phone. Let's be grateful for small favors, right? Okay, kids, maybe I go make some bread and clean my refrigerator. <laughs> I know the life of a rock star, so don't be jealous, don't be jealous. You too can go clean your refrigerator. So go clean your refrigerator. Marie Kondo would be super, super proud of you. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today and listening to me ramble about absolutely nothing in particular or of consequence. And I will see you really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.